Welcome to San Francisco. Hi everyone, welcome to the Do More Life channel. A channel that's focused on travel, adventure, and education worldwide. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about jet lag. A very popular subject. So when I first started coming to Thailand, I think it probably took me three to four weeks to get back on a good time schedule, you know, where I was sleeping correctly. Um, now, after five years, I've gotten it down to three to four days. So listen up and I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to recover quickly. So this is Lombard Street in San Francisco. Well, the first tip I would have for you is don't put too much pressure on yourself your first night back. Remember my first couple trips, I used to put myself under so much stress to try and get eight hours sleep coming my first night back. Just understand that if you get four hours or greater, it's gonna be a win for you. You know, uh, I tried to drink 32 ounces of water my first night back, and that allows me to sleep pretty good, don't have any problem with cramps, that kind of stuff. That will sometimes affect you. If you're coming off of a long haul flight and you're a little dehydrated, you may have some cramps um, that first night back. So just kind of keep that in mind. The second night you need to be really focused on getting your full eight hours and what that means is you don't want to be taking any naps the next day so if you do have a day off from work day before you go back to the grind you want to make sure that you're not taking naps that you're using caffeine to uh, stay up the entire day now there's some healthy forms of caffeine that I use like yerba mate and I also use matcha powder that I mix with water it's a very healthy caffeine and uh, won't have any negative effects for you. So I try to use those the second day and then I try to stay up until at least 8 or 9 o'clock at night, which sounds weird, right? That sounds very early, but I got to tell you, your second night, you're pretty tired. One of the mistakes you want to avoid uh, when it comes to jet lag is, you know, sleeping at weird times of the day when you're tired. So when I first started traveling to and from Thailand, I would literally come back from work. I would be in bed asleep by 5.30. Uh, the big mistake there is if you do the math, eight hours of sleep at 5.30 in the afternoon means you're waking up at 1.30 in the morning. Um, that's not good because then you're not able to get back to sleep. So try to avoid that. Try to stretch yourself a little bit by using the healthy forms of caffeine we talked about. On my previous video talking about getting ready for a long haul flight, I mentioned about uh, abstaining from alcohol and caffeine, you know, in 24 hours leading up to your flight. Um, that does not apply for me once I get back. So I'll sometimes have a drink or two the second night to help me get to sleep. And that tends to really help out. One thing I try to do uh, the first four days that I'm back from a long haul flight is I'll take melatonin. It's a natural remedy to help you sleep at night. And I'll generally take the dosage of about 10 milligrams. That seems to work for me. Five is just not enough to kind of kick me into sleep, but 10 milligrams seems to work pretty well. And it's definitely, it's a nice trick that I have because it doesn't make me groggy in the morning. So I find melatonin helps get me to sleep and I sleep pretty well. So really as you progress into days uh, three and four, just be mindful of the fact that you know, you're hydrating, you're drinking caffeine to stay awake during the day, and that you're staying up until a reasonable hour at night. Um, that will help you get back on the sleep schedule. Like I said, you know, when I first started traveling to and from Thailand, it was three to four weeks. I've gotten it out down to three to four days. Now I will tell you, those three to four days are pretty tough. It's harder than it sounds staying up for the entire day and going to bed at a reasonable hour. You're gonna find that you're pretty 
fatigued come five o'clock end of your work day you'll be pretty tired you got to try to stay up you can't go right to the sack you got to stay up and that'll show that you get your full eight hours you know one of the things i'll do to uh, help out with overcoming jet lag is actually done before i leave to go to thailand so when you come back, it's all about decreasing the amount of stress that you're gonna have in your life. That's gonna help you get to sleep, help you get the rest that you need. So what I do is I'll make sure that I have food to eat in my place before I leave. That means I have like, you know, frozen meals in the freezer, stuff like spaghetti. Um, high carbs usually help me sleep pretty well. Um, so that's something I make sure that I have in the freezer for me. Then also just simple things like, uh, you know, having your laundry done. So you're not having to worry about, you know, what are you going to wear? If you're going back to work, what do you have to wear the next day? What's clean? What's dirty? And that will allow you to kind of come back and have a lower level of stress. A common question I often get asked uh, is, should you sleep on your return long haul flight or not? So I think it's a great question. A lot of people say you should not sleep on the long haul flight because you will not be able to sleep when you get back home. I generally don't subscribe to the, this methodology because one reason, it puts a lot of stress on you to sleep when you get home. So I really feel like when you're coming back, it's okay to sleep on that flight. You're probably not gonna sleep well. So you're probably gonna get four to six hours of sleep on the return flight. That's good if you come back and you can't get to sleep then you're not having a big problem, right? So you're at least getting some sleep on the flight coming back, and that's good. So my advice to you would be to sleep on the return long haul flight, and then try to get some sleep when you get back. So I hope you enjoyed this video on overcoming jet lag. Um, I would ask for your consideration in subscribing to the channel if you did enjoy the video. If you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted to all future videos. Don't put too much, too, don't put your, blah, blah, blah. it's so cold that I cannot even uh, operate the controls on the camera. My, I have no feeling in my fingers. Things I was not doing so right. It's not even a word. So note to everyone, if you come to San Francisco, there's a lot of hills, which is awesome for going down the hill, but uh, not so awesome for going up the hill. So. I think I underestimated the amount of walking in this video. Whew. You know, it would have been smart to bring water on this recording. Yeah, I'm thirsty. It's been a couple hours and I'm thirsty. And I have the camera going. Low battery. Are you kidding me? How can it be low battery? That's a wrap then.